Hey there, it's Mrs. Norman. I knew that I was going to have a sub today and so I decided to make this little video for you uh, because you're new to my classroom and I want to go over um, my rules and expectations and let you know what you're going to learn in science for this unit. We are going to be studying soils, rocks, and landforms. We're going to be using this book in science we will also have some packets that we'll be filling out. And we'll be doing um, some experiments. Well, actually I wouldn't call them experiments. We call them investigations. And we will be uh, watching several videos as we talk about these solids, rocks, and landforms. Now, we are super lucky because we live in an amazing state that has really interesting um, landforms for sure, but definitely also rocks. So this is a really fun unit for us to kind of, I wish that I could take you on field trips and that we could just drive through Utah and check, check out all the amazing landforms that we have. But we'll get to see a lot of pictures and watch some videos. Um, I want to also go over our class rules. You are coming into my classroom and a lot of you have been into my classroom for different things like math interventions or walk to read, but I think it's important that we go through expectations and rules again so that we're all on the same page. Rule number one is be kind. We are going to be kind to everybody in our class. You're going to be kind to my sub today, right? Um, and we definitely want to say nice words and uh, be supportive to our peers. That means our other students that are by us. Not everyone's going to get the right answer. I don't expect you to. That's why we're learning this stuff. We don't already know it. So sometimes I might ask you to guess. And so we want to be kind. If someone gives a wrong answer, we never make fun of people. We always are talking uh, kindly and being supportive. Um, oh, you're also kind to me. And this, of course, the sub that's there that day. Being kind means following directions. It means um, not talking back and things like that. I bet you can come up with some other examples too in your mind about how you can be kind to your teacher. And I promise that I will be kind to you. Um, I will always use nice words and I will be respectful. I, If I want you to respect me, I need to respect you, right? So I promise that I will always do that. Um, the next one is raise your hand. That is also a way that you can show kindness to me. Um, but we want to have a, a great class. We want to make sure that everybody gets a chance to express their opinions and ideas. Um, blurting out just, it's not going to work, especially with how big our classes are. It's just too noisy. If everybody does that, we'll never be able to hear everybody's ideas or get through the lesson. So we are always going to raise our hand if we have a question or a comment. The other thing about that is, is we need to make sure that our questions or comments have to do with what we're learning about. It has to do with our soils, rocks, and landforms, um, or what our, our topic is for that day. Please don't raise your hand to tell a story or make comments that don't have to do with science time. Unfortunately, we just don't have time. And I am interested in what you have to say, but we gotta keep our topic during this time on science, okay? Uh, the next one, do your best. Yeah, I expect you to do your best on everything when you come into our, my classroom. Um, you might not know all the right answers. I don't expect you to. But I do want you to try. I want you to try your best. Um, a lot of the assignments that we do will not be graded for right or wrong answers. Some tests will and some small assignments will. But mostly, I will be checking to see if you are trying. That's all. So most of your grade will be based on your effort. That's it. Occasionally, I will have to check for understanding. So we will have some tests that will have right or wrong answers. But mostly, it's just you doing your very best in class. Okay, the next one is be responsible. That means when you come to science class, you are bringing all the materials that we will need. You need to bring your name tag so that I can learn all of your names. Maybe towards the middle or end when I've got all the names down, then I'll say, oh, you don't 
need to bring your name tags anymore, but for the first while, or until I tell you that you don't need to, I need you to bring those name tags. I want to get to know your names. We just have a lot of kids in our grade, so I haven't learned them all yet, but my goal is to learn them. So bring your name tags. You also will need to bring your Chromebooks. Um, just like today, you had to join our science class. I will be putting things in our uh, science classroom, our Google classroom. So there will be different videos that we might watch or assignments that are online. So bring your Chromebook with you. You will always need to bring a pencil and well, let me show you. This time we will have uh, packets that we're going to be filling out for science. So you won't need your science notebook for the first while. So I will try to remember to let you know when you need uh, to bring your notebook uh, with you to class. But for now, for the first couple weeks, we're just going to bring this every time. So yes, you'll need to take this with you back to class today. But when you come back tomorrow, you're going to bring this with you, and you've got to remember to bring this with you every time until we turn it in. But you'll always have either a packet or we'll be using the notebooks. And I will let you know ahead of time so that you know what to bring. Um, oh, another part of being responsible is turning things in when I ask you to. We also will fill out a lot of these um, worksheets in class, and we'll do it together. So if you're not finishing that in class, that's a problem that you've got. You've got to make sure that you're with us in class and you're paying attention and you're filling them out with us together. Um, just like Miss Fig, I won't be accepting anything turned in late that we did in class unless you're not there. Usually I'll excuse that work and not worry about it. But if you're in class, and we're filling this out, but you don't, then you're going to get a zero. So you've got to be responsible. You're following directions and filling it out with us as we work together. Okay? The next rule is follow directions quickly. That kind of speaks for itself, right? We've got a lot of students. We need everybody to get things done quickly. If we have to wait, then that takes a lot of time. And it distracts people, and we don't want to do that. We need everybody to be on it. The last one is respect yourself and others. It kind of goes with being kind as well, right? We respect their ideas and their opinions, and we say nice things. It also um, goes with other people's property. You happen to be sitting in someone else's desk right now. And they have private and personal belongings inside that desk. Don't look in there. You just know it's true. You need to make sure that you do not go through my students' desks. It is their private property. So we don't go through their desks. We absolutely don't take anything from their desk. In fact, last year, a couple of times, I had some students steal things out of my students' desks. And it was not okay. And it... They got in big trouble for that. But we know that we don't steal and we don't take things that don't belong to us. So I would just stay out of their desk. Don't touch inside. You don't put your hands inside and you don't worry about it. Um, sometimes my students will have to leave a water bottle on their desk. And that's okay. You'll just have to ignore it. It's just for a few minutes. But you don't mess with their water bottle or anything else that's theirs. We're going to leave those things alone. Um... Anything that belongs to me in my classroom as well, I hope that you will respect that and that you'll treat things nicely. Um, the chairs that you're sitting on, I know that you've already figured it out. They go up and down and they roll. Well, please leave the student's chair at the same height that you come in with it being. Don't change it because our students are different heights, the students in my class, and they set their chair how they need it. So unless you can't scoot in to your desk and you have got to shorten it, that's the only way that you can change it. I don't want you messing with the chairs. You can't be rolling around the classroom either. That is a rule in our class, and you can ask my students. If they roll around, they get their chair taken away. So do not roll around on your chair. You're going to just stay seated just like if you had a normal chair in your own classroom. I think that's it for the rules. Um, do a great job for the sub today, and as soon as you're done, you can log out of Google Classroom.